Geronimo Jack here, and welcome back. Class will begin shortly, but first I wanted to quickly talk about how we're going to cover the next session. In this video, we're going to talk about the positions on the team, more specifically what they are, what their job is, and who fits into that role. We'll also briefly touch up on what kinds of items you want to buy and where you want to be as the game progresses, both in lane and in a team fight. At first, I was going to try and fit all the classes into one video, but after putting a little bit of thought into it, I decided it might be better to make separate videos for each class. This will give us a little more breathing room to talk about each role and avoid making a video as long as David Cameron's classic 2009 smash box office hit, Dances with Smurfs. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get right into this. Paragon for Dummies Part 2 Positions What the f*** is the ADC? ADC stands for Attack, Damage, Carry. Most other MOBAs have tried to call them different things like Marksman or Ranger, but the community never really catches on to the fancy corporate buzzwords. Looking at you, right? Typically, an ADC is going to be a ranged character who relies heavily on their auto attacks with very little health and tons of damage. Like, tons of damage. They're going to be front-loading the majority of it on the team, and because of that and how squishy they are, they're the only role in the game which has two other roles entirely dedicated to keeping them alive. Those would be the supports and the tanks. When this video came out, there were three ADCs in the game. We had Channing Tatum, The Hunger Games, and the token black guy. But if you're watching this video from the future through the power of technology, chances are new ADCs have been released, and if you're not too sure who to pick, it's probably a safe bet that picking up these three champions first is a good way to get comfortable with the role. Before you pick up the ADC, I need to ask yourself a few things first. Does the idea of leading your team to victory through sheer skill and determination alone make you moist? Do you want to have all the glory to yourself, even though you had four other people spend the last hour of their lives just making sure that you stayed alive long enough to be relevant to them? Are you a self-entitled drama queen who needs to have all the attention and will absolutely ruin Becky's shit when she wins prom queen and you don't, even though you spent like your entire year on the yearbook committee slaving away instead of going out to Johnny's awesome house parties where he totally would have made you his girlfriend instead of that stupid bitch? <coughs> well then, the ADC is for you. As the ADC, you're going to really want to practice your game mechanics. First off, your creep score is extremely important. You're going to want to learn how to last hit the minions as much as possible because this is going to give you the most amount of money and experience that you can get from killing creep waves. You're going to also want to practice your aiming and strafing since you'll be spending a lot of time using your basic attacks to try and out damage and kill your opponent, so accuracy is key. Lastly, your map awareness is going to be your biggest asset. Because you're such a high priority target, everyone else on the other team is looking to sink their teeth right into you as fast as possible to get you off the map. So knowing your immediate surroundings is going to be critical in determining whether or not it's going to be safe enough to take down an enemy tower or get a kill on the enemy team. Now, if you're wondering what you want to build on an ADC, there's going to be five stats. I know that's a lot, but they're important. That's damage, crit chance, life steal, attack speed, and penetration. You're also going to want to stick a card that has this unique passive here into your deck and build that at some point, probably as your third or fourth card. Now, I want you to focus on damage first and then move into crit chance. You might think that landing that crit with those big flashy numbers does look nice, but trust me, it's better to have the guaranteed damage early on in the game for the crit to work off of, rather than build crit early and then have your strikes do barely more damage only a quarter of the time than if you just built damage in the first place. Once you've got those out of the way, Lifesteal will help you sustain yourself through those longer fights and the attack speed is going to help you land those big hits more frequently. You have penetration there because once the other team starts to build defenses, your raw damage won't be able to do enough alone, so that's going to help you break through their armor and do that damage you need so they don't just smother you and kill you. As always, it's also a good idea to get into the habit of throwing a health and mana pot into your deck, and at least a scout ward, so that you can use that to watch your map and protect yourself from going 0 and 10 in the game. So now you have a general idea of what to build and what skills you might need to excel at living your fantasy of being basically any hero in every action movie ever. But the question is, how exactly do you play these guys and where do you want to be as the game progresses? 
Remember earlier when I said that you are the one with the big target painted on your back? Well, that still applies. So you want to try and stay with at least one other person on your team as much as possible. Basically, just glue yourself to their hip. The ADC should be near either the support or the tank as often as they can, because those guys have the main defenses and utility to ensure that both of you stay alive and get out of bad situations. When the game begins in the early game, you want to try and spend as much time in the lane as possible, getting those last hits like I mentioned before, building up your card points. Once those first few towers start to fall, people will begin grouping up and do full team fights. You have two options here. You can either A, join your team and try and help win a team fight, or B, kill as many minions as fast as you can and try and take the enemy tower. By the way, it's important to note that if you're in a fight or a fight could happen soon and you have less than half of your mana, maybe even a quarter, that is completely okay. Sure, you'll be able to get maybe one ability off and that's about it, but remember, you're an auto attack based champion. All of your damage is going to be coming from your basic attacks, so while having mana and abilities to cast is very helpful, when push comes to shove, it won't be the make or break point in the fight. You will still be able to squeeze a few extra seconds out of that fight, which might be the thing that grabs you the win in a skirmish. So many times have I seen the ADC just disengage and run away or not kill a tower because they had no mana and I can't do anything that caused their team to lose an objective or the fight entirely, and you really don't want that to happen. So let's say a team fight breaks out. It's a five versus five and everyone's there. Both teams are in a decent position. You want to try and put yourself in a spot where you can be as safe as possible within your team while still being able to do as much damage as you can. This is, like I said before, generally near the support and behind your tanks and melee fighters. You want them to be in front of you. If you find yourself being the first one in the fight and the rest of your team is behind you, you are now out of position and you've made yourself an easy target for the other team to jump on you and kill you. That's no bueno. The entire team is going to do their best to focus on you and get you out of the fight as fast as possible. This doesn't even mean they need to kill you. The enemy's front line, the tanks, melee fighters, and anyone with a strong crowd control ability are going to do one of two things. They're either going to try and protect their damage dealers, or they're going to jump you and do everything they can to disrupt you from dealing damage in general. So while the other team is out for blood with your name on it, who should you be trying to shoot? Well, this is a bit of a loaded question that has kind of a weird answer. Ideally, you want to prioritize the enemy damage dealers as much as possible. These are the enemy ADCs and casters having the highest priority and then the tanks having the lowest priority. It's also extremely important that you do your best to remember to try and avoid focusing the tanks as much as you can. They want you to hit them. A more realistic answer though is that you want to focus as much damage as possible to whoever you can hit without compromising your own safety too much. That does mean if the enemy stealer rampage decides that making you their new best friend is a good idea, shooting them might actually be your only real option at the time. If you can avoid them and shrug them off, then do your best to ignore them and keep shooting those higher priority targets. If you find that they're just overwhelming you, then make sure you do everything you can to stick as much damage onto them as possible while trying to put yourself into a safer place. Your damage is the only deterrent here that will make them think twice until your team is able to help you if they can. And that's going to be it for today's class. Hopefully with all this information, you'll be able to get the basics of the ADC down and build on it to grab that win you're looking for. Like I've said before, MOBAs are extremely organic games. MOBAs are extremely organic, which does mean that everything we talk about is more or less a guideline of how to play. So what I'm saying here won't be the right thing to do every single time. I'm just trying to provide the tools so when you jump into the game, you'll have an idea of what to do and if all else fails, you have a way on how to apply your position effectively enough to contribute to your team without becoming a burden. If you have any suggestions, questions, or want to let me know what video you'd like to see, come on, leave a comment below. I'm really taking all the feedback that I can and asking as many questions so I can provide the best videos that I can make for you guys, and I really can't do that without you guys. As a side note, thank you to everyone who watched the last video, liked it, and subscribed. I did get a lot of positive feedback on it, and it really makes me feel good to know that I'm getting this step in the right direction. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, as always, like and subscribe. I've left timestamps in the description, so if you need a reference point of anything in the video, you have easy access to it. Until next time, this is Geronimo Jack signing out, and I'll see you in Agora. Get out the way, get out.